10th of November, that is Sunday, we are having International Science Day. As a chemistry faculty, I thought, let me take, uh, you know, make the most of this opportunity and share my uh, experiences, my knowledge about one of the best scientists ever born on planet Earth. Uh, kya aap James Watson ke mein Okay, James Watson, uh, he is an extraordinary scientist and he played a very incredible role in the field of molecular biology. Many people have contributed into the field of science and one of those was Sir Frederick Griffin and his main work was on pneumonia and he was trying to find a possible cure for it. This uh, International Science Day, let me tell you something about a very inspirational scientist who's personally uh, a big inspiration to me. Uh, her name is Barbara McClintock. Richard Feynman inspires me the most. He worked on quantum mechanics, he worked on quantum electrodynamics. But uh, the thing about Richard Feynman that inspires me is how good a teacher he was. I remember when I was in class 10, my teacher wrote an assignment on the blackboard. He wrote, okay, all of you during the summer vacations have to tell me the name of X scientist because of whom India's GDP is growing very fast. And he gave a very awkward hint. He said, the scientist belongs to the country Y, which is very famous for the Northern Lights. So her, one of her major discoveries that uh, she worked on was the process of crossing. Why she is such an inspiration? Because women at that point of time were not applauded for their work. So she really faced a difficulty in continuing with her work and publishing her work as well. But later, with that steadfast focus and with the very good perseverance, she really worked hard, she focused on her research, even when she was not taken so seriously, she actually came up with a lot of good research. She published her good work and later in her life, that's when people realize that yes, whatever she has done so far has really major implications in the field of science. And then, uh, let me just give you an example of, of how Richard Feynman explained this. Like suppose as we are talking about cold or hot bodies, okay? And we want to sense, we want to get a feel of what is happening on these bodies. And what Richard Feynman would say that, imagine there are particles in that body and they are jiggling. Okay, if it is at high temperature, if it is hot, then they are jiggling very fast. Okay, and if, if it is at lower temperature, then they are jiggling slowly. So that's how he is imagining things and he is showing his imagination to other people so that they can also understand it. All of us worked extremely hard throughout the summer vacations, but none of us could achieve the solution. When we returned to school, our teacher explained everything in minute detail. So do you guys know about uh, the place in India which is called as the Silicon Valley of India? Mm, yes, Bangalore. Ever wondered why Bangalore is called as the IT hub, the Silicon Valley of our country? So uh, what was observed in Sir Frederick Griffith's work was a lot of patience, a lot of observation, a lot of meticulous planning, a lot of effort out of the way. And this is what the scientific temper is all about. You have to think why the things are happening, what could be a possible reason about it. There has to be that why factor always over there. But the reason is that silicon is a semiconductor material which is used for making all the microprocessor chips, all the computer based equipments. And this silicon was discovered by the scientist called as Berzelius. So the X in the question was Berzelius who was the scientist who belonged to the country Y, which was Sweden, that was extremely famous for the natural beauty that we know as the Northern Lights. I think what we need to gather from this is that although we might face a lot of difficulties in everything we do, but if we have a good focus and a good power and we don't, uh, we are not bound by any of the limitations.